What's the best score you've ever scored? Pay me that for you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this one time. No. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, it's a tough question always because there's been important goals that have just been a tap in that's come off my back or my head, but it's meant a lot to the team. So them ones are special, I think. You look at the Euros, um, that was an important goal that kept us in the tournament. Um, that was a big goal and it was obviously my first senior tournament. Um, yeah, there was, there was one at Arsenal that just come off my chest, but you know, they all count. Um, but the one recently that I scored for Man City, I don't know whether any of you have seen it last year. Um, that was a big goal for me, you know, probably a one hit wonder. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've scored different goals, but that's probably my favourite. Goal of the season, that. Yeah, goal of the season. How did you get scouted for England if you're from United? Um, America. America. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, so <coughs> my family is actually from in and around Manchester. Uh, my parents grew up in Stockport and they moved to America when I, well, they've been there for about 35 years now. And I was actually born in Santa Monica in California. Um, so I have dual nationality. Um, but I didn't even realize that England had a national team until I was about 14 or 15, <laughs> to be honest. So um, when I kind of realized, I thought, you know, it would be really cool to represent my parents and my family's country. So I basically harassed the FA <laughs> with videos and letters and <coughs> emails and all sorts of communication. Like I used to send VHS tapes. Hopefully some of you actually <laughs> remember what those are. <laughs> um, <laughs> Of, of my games and my training sessions to the FA. Um, and it wasn't until I got selected by the US under 20 team that England uh, phoned me up. And so uh, they said that we're gonna be playing the States, um, come and have a trial for two or three days and the rest is history pretty much. So that's how I ended up playing for England. And she's the number one. <laughs> Um, what do you think still needs to be done to bridge the gap between the men and the women's game? I think, in my opinion, it's, it's more about changing the, how women playing football is perceived and received by the public. Um, you know, when you, the, more, the more you can see it on TV, the more you're used to seeing it, the more common it is, the more accepted it becomes. Um, so we won't have to deal with people kind of saying, well, you shouldn't be playing. It's a man's sport. It's not. It's a sport. It's. It's not about who plays it. Um, so that, to me, seems to be the biggest barrier. Um, now, when it comes to bridging the gap, I think we're heading in the right direction with clubs like City. You know, obviously putting all this on for us, having you guys here today, raising the bar and the standard for everyone else in in the league. Um, it's. It's more about just the media, making sure everything's getting out there and making sure everything's just being accepted, I think. That's in my opinion. So maybe both of you could tell us a little bit about what it's like playing for England and what you think it's going to be like playing in this stadium here in front of hopefully, you know, a lot of people for the national team. I think for me, since I've been a part of the first team at England, um, we haven't had a game in the North West ever. So for my family to come along, for my friends, it's just to trip up the motorway and you know, I think that'll be amazing and I think about it all the time now, walking out to the stadium. You know, we get to play week in, week out um, with Man City, but to walk out in front of, you know, all the fans for your national team and sing the national anthem with your family and friends in the stand is, is something I'm really excited about. And, you know, I just can't wait for it to come now and hopefully we can have great support like we have at the Man City Games. Um, we came week out last season, we had great support from all the Man City fans and I'm sure they'll all pile in for the England game as well, along with people from all over the country. Yeah, I can't wait. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, so far this season, we've not managed to uh, sell it out yet, but hopefully when we do um, on match day, it's going to be an incredible experience. I mean, it's going to be a hot ticket, I reckon, because just the atmosphere is going to be electric and I cannot wait to play in front of a crowd like that and um, I, I you know like I said my family's kind of from greater Manchester um, so I'm hoping that I'll see a lot of 
familiar faces, and it's not often that I get to see family at, at games as well, so I'm really looking forward to seeing that. And uh, like the last time I saw my granddad's face uh, at a football game was at Burnley oh. back in 2000 and God, date myself now. <laughs> I don't know. Back in like 2003, I think. So um, I would absolutely love to see to see them again at, uh, at our game. I think as well it'll be a p piece of history. I think we're the first women's team to have our own stadium, our own ground. Um, so it'll be the first women's get, women's international fixture fixture at a women's stadium. Is that right? Yeah. So you know it's a great chance to be a part of that and. Great way to send us off. Yeah, send us off for the World Cup. That's in a couple of months' time.